Hey gang, Craig Ripley here. Welcome once again to Living Off the Slab. Now today I'm outside on my review deck once again and we're gonna take a look at another product. Today we're gonna look at the ILM L13 Carbon Fiber Snell Approved Adventure Helmet. So first let's take a look at what you get in the box. Of course you get this helmet, you get a really nice bag to uh, store it in. This is one of the nicer bags that I've seen coming with a helmet. You get an extra shield, which is nice. And if you want to take the peak off, you get a couple of extra pieces of hardware to uh, cover up your mechanisms. In addition to all of those things, you do get a nice little instruction book. However, this is one of my pet peeves with a lot of products today. This instruction book has nothing to do with the helmet that I purchased. It doesn't tell me how to remove the visor, how to remove the peak, how to operate the uh, removable liner. None of that is in this. It's just kind of a generic helmet instruction manual. Now I suggest that you go out to the ILM website, and that's ilmmotor.com, and check out all the helmets that they have to offer. Primarily, they sell a lot of helmets that are more bargain-friendly or budget-friendly helmets, right? They have DOT-approved helmets that range in the $100 range up to about $150 price point, and they have a couple of Snell-approved helmets, which are about $250. This particular model that I have here is Snell approved and of course it is also carbon fiber so it retails for $399. Now if you compare that price of $399 to some other carbon fiber adventure helmets or Snell approved adventure helmets on the market you're going to find that that's a pretty good value. Over here I have my Shoei Hornet X2 helmet. It is not carbon fiber, but it is a Snell approved helmet and it goes for about $650. On the other hand, you have the Climb Creos Pro helmet that is a carbon fiber helmet. It is only DOT approved, however, and it goes for $550. And by the way, I did go in and check on the Snell Memorial Foundation site to make sure this L13 helmet was Snell approved, and it really is. Now one of the nice things that ILM has done is that extra shield that they give you with the helmet, well it is a tinted shield, so it has a light gray tint to it. So that's nice. And like the clear lens that comes on the helmet, they are both pinlock ready. However, ILM does not include the pin lock with the purchase of the helmet. You'll have to purchase that separately. So taking a look at the overall build quality on this helmet, the finish on this carbon fiber helmet is, is very nice, very smooth. I think they've done a good job with that. Um, all of the mechanisms on the helmet seem to work well. This has a three position shield here and there also there is a shield lock on the helmet here which is a nice feature if you're riding off road for example. All, right, all of the pads they seem to be really nice quality all the stitching is nice uh, so I'm really impressed with all that stuff. There are a couple of minor things however that I've got to point out. These helmets come with uh, different colors that you can have for this nose piece and for some inserts here up on the, the visor and I found that there is a slight crack that came from the factory in this, uh, this plastic nose piece. Also on this visor down here on this side there is a bit of a chip, right? And uh, I didn't do either of those. I haven't dropped this helmet or done anything like that since I got it. So those are things that came from the factory. So. Those are a couple of things I would point out to ILM that they need to make sure that they look at. Now a few features that this helmet comes with are a removable breath guard, right, which is nice for helping to eliminate a little bit of fogging on your shield, but if you're a guy like me, then it just drives your breath right back into your glasses, so that's probably gonna come out for me. Also, being a guy with a beard, 
having this uh, chin curtain down here, well, that doesn't really work out very well for me. So that's probably gonna come out as well. But it is a nice feature to ride on cooler days and it will help from getting wind noise up inside your helmet. Now another thing that I've noticed again while playing around with this helmet a little bit is that uh, they have some nice vents up here on the top that are very easy to operate just with the push of a finger. The one thing you need to be aware of however is that if you're going to grab this helmet take it off your head like I often do grab it like this then you're going to close those vents so you're going to have to check those uh, basically every time you put the helmet on because they are really easy to hit and close them now let's take a look at the inner pads of this helmet now one of the nice features that they have on here is that they have these emergency pull tabs so that the ems services can supposedly pull those out very easily and get your helmet off without having to move your head a whole lot i have them on the showy over there and they do work quite well on this helmet however their design really isn't very good let me show you here for example if i grab this and i pull right they come out but it's kind of tough because you've got that strap running all the way through the uh, pad itself. So if you've got a head in here, I can see that that was gonna be a lot more difficult to get out. So on the other hand, if you look at how my showy works, I can just grab them and just rip them right out because again, the strap doesn't go solidly through the pad, right? There's a little space there for the strap to come out. So looking inside this helmet, you can see all the EPS foam and it's all in good shape. It looks like it has good ventilation grooves and so forth in it. We'll test that when we get out on the road. Uh, the, I guess one nitpicky things I could say about it is when I compare this to something like a Shoei, Shoei has uh, some kind of a paint or a spray coating that they put over this to harden that EPS foam up just a little bit. Um, and also in the, ear pockets where you would put your speakers and so forth which they do have some nice cutouts for speakers here uh, well that is typically covered in a showy helmet with a, a cotton kind of material uh, where this is just has the exposed foam now in ilm's defense their cheek pads cover that area far better than the showy cheek pads do so you're not going to be exposed to any of that foam so looking at the pads up close, well, they seem to be very well made. As I had said before, the stitching is very nice on these. They seem to be very comfortable. Uh, I like the fact that they have these little uh, covers, the uh, mesh covers over where your speakers are going to go. Uh, so that's gonna help improve sound, but also comfort on your ears. Uh, there's some mesh on the back here to allow vapor to escape. So again, I, I think the, the pads are, uh, are very nice. They've done a really nice job with it. All right, so the last thing that we're gonna do before we actually put this thing on my head is we're going to remove this peak, remove the visor so that we can install the pin lock. All right, so I pulled the pin lock out of the packaging and tried to install it on the shield and it doesn't fit. I mean, please tell me how this pin lock is supposed to work with this shield, All right? The shield has this notch in the bottom, the pin lock goes down underneath that notch and uh, it's not big enough. You can see that gap in there. It's not big enough to fill the shield. So, uh, I don't know, I guess I'll get in touch with them and see what they say, but uh, this pin lock sure isn't gonna work. So, all right, now that we've gone through all that, let's uh, take my hat off, take my glasses off, put this thing on my head and see how it feels. All right, so overall that seems pretty comfortable. I can tell that it's a slightly different head shape than I'm used to with my Shoei. 
I have that oval intermediate head, right? So um, this one seems to be a little bit rounder, so I can feel it here in, um, in the front of my head a little bit more on my forehead. Uh, but it's not bad, and uh, I'm sure that as the helmet wears in that uh, I'll get used to that and it'll form to my head a little bit. So uh, let's see if we can uh, strap it up. Of course, we got to get all of this beard out of the way. So got a nice D-ring fastener here, which of course is the best, the most safe way to do that. Right. Now, one thing I do notice, however, is that... Uh, there's a lot of strap here, all right, to deal with. So now I'm gonna to try to get this tight and... Okay, so you've gotta pull it quite a ways, at least I do, to get it tight enough on my head, all right? Um, so there's a lot of strap there, so gotta work through that. Now a nice thing though is that they do have a magnetic fastener up here, so you can just uh, reach up there and snap that in place to keep that extra, extra strap in place. So, all right, let's go out and let's take it for a ride. But before I do that, I'm going to need my glasses, and that brings me to another point. They do have a feature here that allows you to very easily slip glasses in there, which is very nice. I have to say, this is the best helmet I've ever had as far as putting my glasses on and off. All right, so I am back from my ride. In fact, it's actually a couple of weeks later, so I've had a chance to spend a little bit more time with this helmet. And I have to tell you that the more I wear this L3 carbon fiber Snell-approved helmet from ILM Helmets, the more that I like it. Um, it's much lighter than my Shoei by one pound, right? This is a three and a half pound helmet versus a four and a half pound helmet for my Shoei. So that really makes a big difference. I was actually surprised at how light this helmet feels. Also, I've been pleasantly surprised to find out that this is a quieter helmet than my Shoei. When I'm out on the highway and I close that visor, this is a pretty quiet helmet. About as quiet as my R1200 from Shoei, which is a nice quiet helmet in itself. So again, those things are really pluses for me. Now, when I first started wearing this helmet, I did find that I could really feel it in the front of my head. And it wasn't painful, but I could feel it because the shape is a little bit different than what I'm used to. But the more that I wear it, the more that I get used to it, and the helmet is breaking into my head, so it's getting more comfortable for me. When I first started wearing it, I would take it off and I would get a crease at the top of my head. Here, I'll show you some pictures. Now, I am bald and any kind of pressure on my head shows up. When I wear my showy, I have these ridges in my head when I take it off. Even when I take this hat off, you can see the indentations from the elastic in the helmet. So part of that is just the nature of having a bald head. And I've learned that as long as I don't have any pain from it, well, I just don't worry about it. The head will go back to normal after a while. But the more I wear this one, the less I'm getting that indentation there. So the helmet is wearing into my head and getting more comfortable. Also, the ventilation on this helmet is better than on my Shoei. I don't feel a whole lot coming from this nose vent, and neither do I on the Shoei, but the top vents, I can feel the wind going across the top of my scalp much more in the ILM helmet than I can in the Shoei. So that's three pluses for this over that more expensive helmet. Now also that strap that was a little bit stiff and hard to use at first, well, it's getting much easier. It's breaking in and it's getting easier to get tight. So again, I'm getting used to it, but also I think it's breaking in. Now I also want to give you an update on a couple of those issues that I did have with this helmet. And that is that I've got this chip visor in the corner over here and a little bit of a cracked nose piece here. Neither one of those things are going to stop me from using this helmet. But I think it's good that those happen because then I get to test out the customer service for ILM and see how good it is. And I have to tell you that so far they have been great. They're going to ship me out new parts so that I can replace them. And also that visor, the wrong 
pin lock that they sent me, well, they're going to replace that as well and send me the correct pin lock. The downside to that is that all that stuff has to come from China, so that is going to take a little bit of time, probably a couple of weeks to get here. So that means that I'll have to do an update video later on, again, after I've had some time to spend with this helmet and then get all those parts and everything replaced. So I am going to continue using this as my go-to helmet so that I can give you that longer term review. I said overall, I'm pretty pleased with this helmet and I think that it's definitely worth taking a look at if you're in the market for an adventure helmet and you want something that's lighter and something that is Snell approved. So again, check them out, ilmmotor.com. You can find links to how to purchase this helmet in the description of this video, as well as you'll find a write-up out on my website and I'm gonna throw this into my gear pages as well. All right, guys. Talk to you later, ride safe.